Hey guys, this will be 80 Super Bowl 4. So today, guys, I'm going to talk to you guys about the matches. Wow. We had some crazy matches today. So let's start with the first one we got here is Morocco nil, Spain nil. We have to have a conversation, and I'm going to have to have a conversation about Spain. We're going to have to have a conversation about Spain after the World Cup ends. I just don't have the time to do it right now during this period because, you know, final exams and everything. Uh, but maybe after the World Cup, we're going to have to have a conversation about teams that disappointed us. And I'm definitely putting Spain in that conversation. And it's crazy because Spain started off this World Cup in such a good manner. You know, winning against Costa Rica 7-0. You know, everyone thought, hey, look, Spain could do something, right? Then they tied against Germany. You know, and, you know, we, we know Germany got eliminated. And then they lost to Japan. And now they lost to Morocco on penalties. Now, before I talk about Spain, though, I think we need to uh, talk about Morocco first because what they did in this match was phenomenal. The fact that they came into this match as complete underdogs is incredible, you know. And even I didn't expect this from Morocco. For them to qualify for the knockout stage for the first time since 1986 is incredible. And with, keep in mind, they had Croatia and Belgium in the group. And they were able to get results against two of the World Cup um, Final Four teams from the previous tournament. It's very, very impressive. You know, and I think you saw today how great defense by Morocco were. Morocco were excellent at the back. I think Hakimi, um, and Agaret and Roman Saiz were excellent. And Amrabad was controlling the midfield. I also have to give a shout out to Buffal. Buffal basically destroyed Lorente. Lorente was awful in today's game. Lorente even had to come off, I believe. And Buffal just terrorized him. He basically got the better of him. And as for um Morocco man, um, and as for Spain man, they just couldn't get get past like. The, the, my issue with Spain is that they just do all this passing, passing, passing. But there's no, like, there's no creativity. Like, it's just passing for the sake of passing. And Spain just needs to do, move on. Like, and I think this whole passing thing needs to stop because it's getting repetitive. And we saw how Morocco on the day today didn't allow Spain to do that. And I understand Spain's forwards are not very good. I understand but that also comes down to Luis Enrique. Like, why on earth are you not starting Morata in a knockout game? Why are you starting Asensio? Asensio at striker. Asensio doesn't do much. He doesn't even play as a striker. Luis Enrique, I like you as a coach. You're a great coach. But your player selection is very off. It's very questionable. Okay? And also, why on earth did you start um, Lorente at right back? Why not start Carvajal? I understand Carvajal is not the same as he used to be in 2018. I get it. He's kind of on the decline now. But Carvalho is still a natural right back. Lorente isn't a natural right back. You know, and you can see how Spain were really struggling in this game, you know. And for all the chances they had, they created 1,000 passes. But hear this out, right? One shot on target. One shot on target. You're telling me from 1,000 passes, you can only get one shot on target? That is embarrassing. That is embarrassing. And I think for Morocco on the day, yes. They were defensive in extra time. I'll give them that. Morocco were very defensive. But it's not like they had chances. They had chances in this game. You know, I remember there was two chances. I believe was it Sabari. I think he came off the bench. He could have scored those chances. For Morocco, man, and you also have to give a shout out to Bono. Bono made some really good saves, especially right at the end of regulation time. And I believe right at the end of extra time. He was very crucial, man. And he saved three penalties. And we also have to com talk about the penalties, man. The penalties Spain took... It makes Japan's penalties look good. And that's saying something. Spain's penalties on the day were awful. I'm sorry. Like, why is Sarabia taking a penalty? Why on earth is Busquets taking a penalty? Did you guys see what Busquets did for his run-up? That, that was terrible. Like, he was literally just jogging. It was like, okay, guys, I'm just going to go. Like, what kind of run-up is that, you know? And you have to give massive credit to Bono for making those saves. And then, obviously, um, you know, I think um, Danny Olmo, I think, missed his penalty as well. Actually, let me go ahead and check who missed their penalties real quick. I don't quite remember everything off the top of my head. Uh, let me see. Um, I believe, yeah, I know Sarabia missed his. I know Busquets missed his. And I believe for, um, let's see who else missed his penalty. Um, let me see who else. Ah, yes, Solar. Solar missed his penalty. Why does Solar come on, right? This is another thing I'm talking about is that from Spain in particular is that they make these weird changes. Luis Enrique makes these weird changes. And I just don't understand why he's doing that for, you know. And I just think it's really weird and uncomfortable. And I just don't think it's right, you know. And then for Morocco, man, they scored all their penalties except for Banu. He missed his penalty. Ziyech scored his Sabari, Hakimi, you know. And I just think that for um, 
in Spain in particular, man, this is a huge, huge disappointment. And Nico Williams, man, Nico Williams is was actually one of the best Spain outfield players on the day. I thought he was great on the day. I think he should have honestly stayed on for a lot longer. I don't know why he came off before penalties, which I thought was really weird. But it is what it is. Maybe he got injured or something. Let's see. Nah, I wasn't injured. It says on football. So I think for um um for um Spain in particular, man, they have to look back and say this is a huge missed opportunity because. With all due respect, Morocco is a great team. They're defensively solid, but they know that they should, they should, that we could have had a Spain, we could have had a Spain Portugal match, you know. And they're thinking to themselves, this is a big missed opportunity. And for Spain, man, a lot of these players have to go. Like Busquets, he's gonna have to go. Jordi Alba is gonna go. And a lot of these players are probably not gonna be there. Carvajal may not be there for the next World Cup, you know. And I think for Luis Enrique, man, he has to look at this as a huge disappointment. Like for all this hype that Spain got. For them to finish, for them to get egg and knocked out in the round of 16 yet again by penalties is heartbreaking. And I understand penalties is tough. I understand penalties is almost like a lottery in some ways. I understand penalties may not go your way. But here's the thing. That's what you get it done for. We have 120 minutes to score. And if you can't score in 120 minutes, you deserve to go to penalties. I, I think it's fair, you know. And for Spain, man, they have to look at themselves like, how do you allow this to happen? So, for Morocco, man, it's a huge, huge, impressive accomplishment. You know, the, the first time we had an African nation in the quarterfinals, I believe, since Ghana did in 2010, I think. So, um, who knows, man. They could be the first African nation in the semifinals. And what awaits them is Portugal. <laughs> Portugal, man. Portugal, man. Oh, my God. Portugal's attack is scary. If Brazil's attack is not scary, this attack is scary. Because look at the amount of depth Portugal have. They have even a bench Cristiano Ronaldo today. And Gonzalo Ramos started this game, and he was fantastic. He scored a hat-trick on the day. A hat-trick. The very first hat-trick in this year's World Cup is a huge statement in itself. And I think for Portugal in particular, man, you can just see how good they were on the day. They were excellent on the day. Switzerland were very poor. They were trying to do what South Korea did yesterday against Brazil. And you can see how South Korea just cannot match. Um, Switzerland just isn't on Portugal's level. The first goal was scored by Gonzalo Ramos. Uh, good assist there from Joao Felix. Joao Felix, I thought, had a good game. Then uh, Gonzalo Ramos puts it in your post. Bruno Fernandes gets an assist for the Pepe goal for the second goal, and then a halftime there. Uh, Switzerland did create some good opportunities. Um, you know, Diego Costa having to make some good saves. He made um, how many saves? He made one save in the day. Um, and then the third goal was scored by um, Gonzalo Ramos. Great assist from Diego Dallo there. And the fourth goal was scored, uh, fourth goal was scored by Guerrero. Nice assist by Ramos. Akanji did get a consolation goal. And then Joao Felix gets an assist there for Gonzalo Ramos. And then even Ronaldo scored, but it was offside. And then Guerrero lays it and puts a nice assist for Liel, who does a stunning finish to make it 6-1 in stoppage time. And yeah, Portugal, man, just looking so good. They're looking so dominant. You know, they were so good on the day. As for Sommer, man, he was playing on the day. He was very poor. Um, he did. He made three saves on the day. Not very good. Ricardo Rodriguez, I thought, was poor. Akanji... There wasn't any Swiss player that was great. Mbolo was poor as well. Um, and yeah, for Switzerland, man, I don't know what they were thinking, man. What were they thinking? Like, they were trying to go head-to-head -head with Portugal. And I always knew that Portugal was going to win this game. I always knew they were going to win this game. Um, they just have way too much quality in the attack. And we're going to have a great match. We have a great match set up in the quarterfinals. Portugal versus Morocco. Can Morocco get revenge for what happened in 2018? As we all know. So... It's going to be interesting, and um, yeah, guys, it's going to be interesting. So, um, like I said, guys, it will be a live stream today. It'll be, it won't be a, like a long stream. It'll be a short stream just because I'm currently really busy at the moment, so it'll be an hour stream at the most. Um, so, I'll have one of you guys come on um, and give their thoughts, and so um, it should be interesting, man. So, make sure, guys, if you're new out here, consider hitting that like button. Hit the subscribe button down below, and um, the live stream that I have set up should be out, should be starting on the ground in like 20 minutes from now from the time this is being recorded. So, hope I can see you guys then. Make sure you guys comment down below your thoughts. Like this video, enjoy, subscribe if you're new on here, comment down below your thoughts, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.